All right, Avid folks, what's up? Welcome to your week one of Avid. Uh, we're going to be going over the agenda this week so you know what assignments you need to roll with. Uh, just to give you kind of a basic idea, um, I'm going to be taking it kind of easy with Avid this week because I really think the purpose of Avid is to help you be successful in your classes, especially all those core classes, math, English, science, history, um, and language. Uh, and so uh, I realize with all this distance learning that's going on right now that uh, this is maybe a piece of cake for some of you because you're very technologically advanced and it may be like, oh, I just entered a whole different universe. And so I want to get everybody with this first week just kind of getting settled in, getting the basics down of how we're going to do some of the things we do in Avid. I'm not going to throw any new content at you. Um, nothing too rigorous, nothing too hard, but I want you to figure out like how to do questions in summary. I want you to figure out how to take pictures and turn them in and do um, logs and, and stuff like that. So and manage your time. Gosh, people, you have to manage your time. If you don't manage your time in online learning, you're going to be screwed. You're going to be like all over the place and you're going to come and it's going to come like Sunday night or Monday morning. You're just going to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't get anything done. You have to do all those things we were talking about in class, moving distractions, getting away from bad situations, trying to stay focused on your work, trying to like, you know, not procrastinate and have to be stuck on a computer or, or doing like social media stuff or playing video games. Like you're going to have to learn to manage that time. Because now you don't even have like me in the classroom coming around going, hey, man, let's get to work. Let's use this time effectively. You're not going to have that. I'm giving you the whole load at the beginning of the week. And you are going to use that time as a college bound student should. And I should mention college bound here because um, this is your taste of college. This is exactly what college is going to be like. The only difference is you'll have lecture classes that you go to but they're not gonna be very long. They're gonna be like an hour or so. And so you're gonna have all this open time and you're gonna to have to start figuring out, do I wanna wake up early and get work done? Do I wanna stay up late and get work done? Do I wanna get done in the middle of the day? Am I gonna do a whole big chunk of it at one time or I'm gonna do little pieces of it throughout the week? You're gonna be the one that has to determine that. And so you might say, man, I wasn't ready for that yet. And it's like, okay, I'm sorry, the situation calls for it, but that's where we're at right now. And so, you can't be blowing these things off and then expect to just pump them out real quick. It's going to take time. And so we're giving you a week's worth of work in every single class because we're expecting you to do that much work each week. So that's my little spiel this week about how to deal with distance learning. All right, let's jump into the actual assignments that I'm giving you for AVID this week. Uh, let's move that out of the way. All right. So again, you've come into the online notebook, you've made sure to click on the AVID lessons. Uh, we're doing the same lessons for the juniors as we are as the ninth graders. Uh, why is that? Because I think these lessons are nice intros for both of you uh, to just get kind of settled in, get your toes dipping into the cold water here of distance learning. And so uh, this video is going out to the ninth graders and the juniors. That will not be the case with week two and afterwards. Uh, we're gonna be splitting obviously the juniors are gonna be very focused on getting ready for those college applications. Um, you don't have to worry about SATs anymore, juniors. Hey, hey, because they've been waived because of the coronavirus. But so now we got to focus on that other stuff. So grades and GPA and that kind of stuff is really going to matter even more than it was before. Uh, ninth graders, we're still focusing on how to be successful students, how to get those A's and B's, and how to get those good grades um, at, as we get geared up for what college is going to be asking of us in our 10th and 11th grade years. All right, so you click on AVID. You, again, it always goes to the online expectations. Make sure you click on week one. Week one, here are the topics this week. Um, you're going to keep a log of your work. We'll go over that in just a second. Uh, something you'll do on paper, take a picture of. I'm gonna show you how to set up and to do your first online questions in summary. Ninth graders, this is gonna be super new for you. And for 11th graders, you should have at least gone through this before uh, with me last year at the Honors Chemistry and the Online Notebooks last year. But um, there may be a little bit different, so I definitely think you should watch the videos and stuff that are going with it. We're gonna do a tagger this week. 
uh, just to check those grades before we get started with this distance learning and make sure that we are ready to go and to make sure that it's not a mystery and we know what our grades are and we know what we need to work on and which classes are more important and, and blah, 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 right? Um, I'm gonna have you do something which is called prepare for online learning chart and um, online learning chart and then setting yourself up for success. Both of these are gonna involve just a quick little thing you do on paper and taking a picture. So piece of cake. All right, what I just said at the beginning of this, being proactive, hopefully everybody, those words jump out at you. That's habit number one in our seven habits of highly effective teens. Uh, gotta be proactive. You gotta see the problems before the problems happen. That is key. That is really key. And if you are stuck on something, you can't just go like, eh, I don't get this stuff, whatever. It's not gonna work. Cause there's not gonna be anybody coming by your desk and saying, hey, let's get on this. Or, hey, do you have a question? Can I help you out? It's not gonna happen. You gotta be proactive, you gotta reach out, you gotta make it happen. All right, this video is gonna be linked right here, uh, if it's not already, what, by the time you get this. And so uh, you can see what uh, I'm expecting of each of these assignments uh, as I've explained them on this video. Okay, the yellow section right here, very, very important. This is like your checklist for the week. This is what you need to make sure to get done before the week is over. First and foremost, you need to make sure to log into Jupiter at least once this week. Um, that we are gonna be doing attendance, especially through your second period class, but um, just log on to every, uh, log on to Jupiter and it registers it for all your classes because um, I'm gonna be checking the log on Sunday nights of who logged into Jupiter between Monday and Sunday and saying, yeah, you went in there and at least you're alive and you're trying and you're looking things up and and we don't have to have the office hunt you down and find out what's going on and why have you not even logged into Jupiter grades. So it's not logging into the online notebook, it's logging into Jupiter grades. Make sure you log into Jupiter at least once a week, which if you're doing your work, it's impossible not to log into Jupiter grades because that's where you're gonna be turning all this stuff in. Okay, so make sure you log in. Second thing, you're gonna have a picture of the log that you're gonna make. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. You're gonna have three questions and a summary for each class. And when I say all classes, I mean all six. We're gonna to get to that. You need to complete the tagger online. There's nothing new with that. That's just the normal, what we've been doing with the tagger anyway. You're gonna take a picture of the online learning chart you're gonna make, and you're gonna take a picture of your work area at home, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Okay, so basically three pictures, question summary, and an online tagger. That's your avid work for the week. If you're not sure how to turn these pictures in, the things that you make on paper, I put the link right here on how to turn in paper assignments through Jupyter. Click on that link, it'll give you the instructions on how to do it. All right, let's jump into the assignments. Assignment number one, you're gonna make a log for the week. What's this log gonna be? Well, I give you an example picture right down below here. Basically on a sheet of lined paper, I'm just looking at you to set up a nice little table, seven days a week, hour for each line, and then I just want you to list when you work and what were you working on? That's all I'm looking for, okay? It's real basic, just, hey, it's, I mean, if you're looking at this video right now, I would log it, you're gonna make your log and I would log it like I, I worked on Avid stuff, done. I worked from Avid stuff from eight to nine o'clock on Monday, okay? Uh, and then you can see through this picture, you know, you're not gonna have every line filled out. You might not even have every day filled out. Look, we left Saturday blank, why? Because you didn't do any work on Saturday. Maybe you didn't do work on Saturday, okay? Maybe you bust out a whole full day on Monday and got everything done Monday and then every day after that is blank. You could do that, it's totally up to you. That's why I'm calling this a log and not a schedule because I want you to actually just write down what you actually did, okay? Now a lot of you like to try and like, oh dang, I gotta turn this thing in, let me just make it up real quick. Making it up real quick is not gonna help you realize that you did or did not do the right thing. You gotta be honest with yourself, all right? How to make this log in more detail, there's a link right here for that video, so click on that link and it'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and I actually make it for you on the video. All right, so that's the first assignment. You'll take a picture of that, turn it into Jupiter at the end of the week. Assignment number two, this is the questions and summary. I give you a nice little description here that you can read talking about the good and the bad news. Uh, I will tell you the good news is no slows, no notes or references. It's just class, questions, summary. What's the bad news? 
The bad news is I want you to do it for all six classes. So ninth graders, you were used to not doing it for biology because we did the essential questions. Well, you're going to do it for biology now. You were used to not doing it for Mr. Moran's world geography class because he was having you do a whole bunch of question summary stuff in his class. Well, I want you to do it now as well. So if he has you do it, I still want you doing it for my class. Okay, you're going to do an essential question in biology. I still want you to do the questions in summary here and now. And even PE, yes, yes, that is true, even PE. And you're like, why? Because again, you're not gonna be going to a class and just walking the track for the whole two hours like apparently a lot of you tell me you used to do. So now I want you to actually, what is the PE lessons? What are they asking you to do? If it stretches, if it's exercise, if it's just logging what exercise you do at home, then create three questions off of those exercises. Create three questions off of those stretches. If it's something nutritional, which please, I hope it is something where they teach you about nutrition and eating the right things, because everybody right now is getting the quarantine 15, putting on a little extra pounds because we're just sitting around eating all day. Um, uh, if they give you anything about that, or about health or mental health or anything, just those are your questions in summary right there. Okay, this is a video that shows you how to set up those questions in summary in the pages here underneath your name. So make sure you watch that video and set them up. I have specific titles for those pages, like week one question summary, week two question summary, and you need to set up all the weeks for all six classes. So this is gonna take you a little time. I expect maybe 15, 20 minutes, depending on how well you can navigate the online notebook. And then at the end of the week, you should go in and fill in week one, three questions and a summary for each class. And then the criteria for summaries and questions are still the same. Complete sentences, no grammar or spelling mistakes, write in detail, avoid pronouns, all that stuff is staying the same. Um, it will be checked most likely by either me, probably me on the first week, and then uh, I'm probably gonna be bringing in our tutors to grade this stuff online, especially your questions and summary, um, the weeks after. And I note in the video, and it's very important for you to know this, fix that real quick, uh, important for you to know this, um, I'm expecting your questions and summary are done by 8 a.m. the following Monday. So you get it today on April 20th. By 8, April 27th at 8 a.m. in the morning, your question summary should be good. Am I going to grade them at 8 o'clock in the morning? I can. It's, it's okay because I'm telling you right now that they need to be ready by that time. I could grade them at 8.01 on Monday morning. I might not. The tutor might. I might, I might wait till Wednesday. I might do them all Monday night. Who knows when we grade it, but you need to have it done by 8 a.m. just so you make sure you get it all in. Okay, otherwise you're, you're playing a game of chance like Magic 8-Ball or whatever. Okay, assignment number three, online tagger. Straightforward, same as it was. Click on the link. It'll take you to the online tagger. Uh, you're gonna notice it's gonna look a little different. It's still the same information and the same questions, but it's gonna be, I believe it's green. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's green. Why is it different looking? Because now I'm running the tagger through Microsoft instead of through Google. Does it matter to you? No, but I just wanted to show that to you. So if you see that page, you're like, whoa, 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 that looks totally different. It does look different, but it's still the same questions, grades, GPA, a couple of review questions. Do I have all A's and B's? If not, you need to go answer the last three questions. Questions for the ninth graders might look a little bit different. This is what the 11th graders have been rolling off of. Now both of you are gonna be using the same tagger. Uh, actually, the ninth grade tagger is different than the 11th grade tagger. <clears throat> I apologize. Ninth graders, your tagger is gonna be one. 11th graders, your tagger is gonna be another. So for my tutors, my upperclassmen tutors, um, like I'm just throwing names out that top of my head, D'Angelo, Brian, Mauricio, Angelica, Giselle, uh, make sure you're doing the 11th grade tagger. Uh, from the 11th grade notebook, not the 9th grade tag. Okay. Assignment number four, you're gonna make an online learning chart. Okay, what is this? It's a little chart just like this. You're gonna make it on paper, like so. Okay, and I've actually even filled it in here for Biology and Avid. Um, and what is it? Basically, you remember at the beginning of the semesters, I would give you the plan for each class and you'd look through the syllabus and say, all right, how am I gonna get graded? How's it gonna be broken down? Okay, it's the same concept, except this time we're doing it for all this distance learning stuff. So you're gonna make uh, a chart, a table, and you're gonna put your classes, periods one through six, uh, biology, AVID, and so on. For my juniors, you'll put AVID in fourth period. And um, 
Just three basic questions for biology. Where do I get my lessons? Well, you get them from the online notebook. So you can put Microsoft 365 notebook. Okay. There you go. Um, you can even say uh, YouTube for the YouTube channel. All right. Ooh. No E. Okay. And since you have me for June, or sorry, ninth graders, you have me for both. Avid and biology would be the same in both of these. How do I turn this work in? So what platform, what website, what method are you turning in work for each of these classes? For me, it's going to be Jupiter grades uh, with pictures and online quizzes. Okay, again, for both classes. Don't expect any quizzes in uh, Avid, but if we do, that's where it'll be. And then the third uh, column is, how are you gonna get help? How is this teacher going to help you and how should you reach out to them? For me, it's Jupyter message, text. Um, you can email me, can call me on the phone. Um, but Jupyter Message and text are probably going to be the best options for you right off the bat. So I would go with those two first. Uh, speaking of getting help from my classes, uh, I just had a conference with the UCSD tutors last night. And um, we are going to try and set up video conferencing uh, during the office hours at 1.30 to 3 o'clock. But that's not set up yet, and that won't be happening this first week. So don't count on that for this week. But um, keep watching the week, uh, the agendas for each week, and I will tell you which days and which uh, times we will have UCSD people that you can jump in with and do some tutoring. I will be available at each of the tutoring as well. I'll be on those video conferences, but I'm going to probably have the tutors run them. Juniors, that's going to be extremely important for you once it does happen, because once we have uh, UCSD people running uh, office hours, these are people you can start talking to about those college applications that you got coming up in like three to four months. And you can pick their brain and ask them all the questions and how did they apply, what SAT scores, although that doesn't count this year, what grades do they have, what colleges do they apply to, how many do they apply to, all those good questions that we've been talking about all year. Okay, but back to this assignment. So you're gonna do this for me. Um, that's why I give it to you here in this picture. But then I want to know about your third, fourth, and fifth period and sixth period classes, okay? And this is going to be a nice little piece of paper that honestly you should keep around so that you don't get confused because there's going to be some teachers on Google Classroom. There's going to be me on Microsoft 365. There's going to be some teachers that are sending it to you on Jupyter Message. There's going to be some teachers that might be just having videos of their work. I want you to keep it straight. Which classes are doing which things for these three categories? That will help you be successful as a distance learner. Okay, so when you are done with that, once you figured it out for all six classes, do it on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, turn it in on Jupiter. And then the last assignment, which looks like a lot, but it's actually not, is talking about this thing I call the corner office. So a lot of us are going to uh, be working, probably don't have a nice little cushy office where I can go in and it's all nice and quiet and nobody's going to bother me. Um, if you have that, take advantage of that, but more than likely, not going to have it. So I want you to try and set a spot up where it's like, that's my school spot. So when I sit there, I know it's time to work. And when I'm not working, I don't sit there. And that could be at the kitchen table. That could be at a side desk or a side table in the room, in the living room or in your room. Could be at your bed, could be on the floor. It's up to you what you want to do. Um, but these are the things I want you to think of when you set up your corner office for digital learning. Okay, make sure that you have your computer that has a keyboard, or if you're using your phone, you know, you have a place to charge that stuff in so it's near an outlet or plug. So that way you're not in the middle of an assignment and the power goes out. So make sure you check that. Um, make sure you've got paper around you so you don't have to go hunting for it if you got an assignment you need to do. Make sure the internet connection in that location is strong enough, uh, whether you're using it through the phone, a hotspot, or Wi-Fi at the house. I would try to find a nice, comfy situation. Uh, this is something that you may not be worried about, 
but you will is if you find yourself like laying in awkward positions on your bed or on the ground, you might start noticing your back or your neck is hurting because you're going to be doing this for, for hours each week. And so you might have done homework on your bed, you know, in the past because it was like ah, 30 minutes, no big deal. Yeah, you've been working on your bed for two to three hours straight. And you know, I still feel a little something, something. So uh, make sure your posture is good. Uh, pens and pencils. Uh, pens will show up better on camera if you're looking to do anything with uh, video conferencing or when you need to take pictures of assignments, pen shows up better. So I recommend pen. But I know for math, a lot of you like to use pencils. So make sure those are available. And then last but definitely not least, and I should probably even just bold this and make this in red because this is how big this is going to be. Um, removing distractions. I, I can't tell you guys how much you have to set yourself up for success here. Okay. Where I'm going to actually take a picture of my workspace. I am not near a TV. I do not have the radio going, although that's fine for some of you. If you want to do that. Um, my phone is face down. So that, you know, I don't even have little notifications that are like, huh, what? Say, what, huh? Okay. Just put it face down. Put it somewhere. If you need it, it's there. Maybe in your pocket. Maybe in your backpack. Um, if you can try and find a place or talk to mom and dad about ways that you can get little brothers and sisters not to bother you when you're in that location, that would be helpful. Um, and then on your phone or on your computer, Close those other applications, close the social media stuff and, and close any video games that are gone because you know that's, the, that's just going to distract you. you. You have to be smart about this. You have to get work done, okay? So there's a time to work and there's a time to play. When you're playing, I would step away from your work area and go have fun, do whatever you need to do. When it's time to work, sit down and move all those distractions, okay? And so um, what I want you to do is go through this list, try to meet as many of these and all of them if possible in setting up your corner office space. And then to get a grade for this, I'm just looking for you to take a picture. Okay, you're just gonna take a picture of it and submit it up on Jupiter. And again, if you don't know how to submit these pictures on Jupiter, it's up here at the top of the page, right underneath the list of things to do, how to turn in paper assignments, which you'll take a picture of. If you already have a picture of it, you just follow this part where you submit it into Jupiter. And that's your week, four assignments. Log, setting up questions and summary and doing week one. Online tagger, online chart. I'm sorry, there's five this week. And number five is picture of your work area. Okay, should be able to get all that done. That doesn't look to me more than maybe an hour to an hour and a half of work. Shouldn't take you too much with that stuff. And uh, the log is the key. Get started on the log right away. Like right now, I would make this log and just have that piece of paper sitting around and um, just fill it in every time you start doing work. That's the first thing I would start with. Uh, storing papers. Now, that's not on here anywhere, but this is another thing. I know a lot of you are going to be sharing computers with brothers and sisters because they got to use it for their school and then you got to use it for your school. Make sure you log out of any websites when you turn the computer over to a brother or sister or a mom or dad. That way, you know, nobody goes in and messes up things that you're working on just, just to be safe. And then as far as any like papers you create, I would make sure that you store those in a spot. Don't just leave them out on a desk like my 10 year old does. I would actually use your backpack as like a file cabinet in a way. Just keep putting them in your backpack. So that way they're all there. So even if, so let's just say like you take a picture of them and you turn that stuff in online and then I come back and I give you a missing or a zero or, or I say, oh, I, didn't, I never got it. And you're like, well, okay, I'll just take another picture of it. Um, speaking of pictures, uh, I'm not really advertising this too much to my biology, but for my avid, if for some reason turning them in through Jupiter becomes an issue, you can take pictures of all this work and just text it straight to me on my phone and um, make sure you have a title on everything and make sure you have your name on it. So that way I can know who this is and who does it, and what assignment does it belong to so I can give you credit for the right assignment. Okay, uh, with that, again, reach out to me if you have questions, be proactive this week. Make sure that you are monitoring your time and you're using it effectively and that you're, um, you know, 
I, I'm not even going to try and know what your situation is. Mom, dad could be working, could not be working. It could be you having to step up and do more work. There could be brothers and sisters of all different ages all around the house. I don't know what your situation is, but if you're running into problems, reach out to me, say, Mr. Charles, and this is what I got going on. If you have any suggestions, you have anything I can help me with, let's have a phone conference. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we can figure some things out and I'll work with you. And if needs be, I'll work with mom or dad too and say, hey, you know, son or daughter is having a little bit of trouble with this. Can you help them out? And so, um, it, but I can't do any of that if you don't reach out to me and explain what the problem may be. So uh, thank you to those who've already reached out and checked in. Uh, hopefully you get this message to everybody else in class so they can check in and be successful this week. All right, have a good one. We'll see you next week and I'm hoping to see all your work by Sunday night. Thank you.